So once again, like the previous video, we need to find the amount of energy required to construct the sphere. So this time we're going to use the second method. We're going to use this formula. So the amount of energy required is equal to epsilon over 2 multiplied by this expression. So the electric field, the magnitude of the electric field, squared times a unit of volume. So once again, we're going to use spherical coordinates. So this is going to be equal to r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. So, and we're going to integrate across all space and not just a sphere. It's going to be from zero all the way to infinity. And the first thing we need is to find the electric field. So we've actually found the electric field of a uniformly charged sphere before. So you can look back at those videos if you need. But when r is smaller than the radius of the sphere, so inside of the sphere, the electric field is equal to, so, uh, write that again, 4 pi epsilon q divided by r squared r over big R. When r is larger than the radius, so don't forget the unit vector, this same expression divided by r squared, so it's like a point charge. So this we already know, so I'm not going to prove this again. So using this, we can evaluate this interval. So let's do just that. So once again, since we're integrating over 3D space, we have a triple integral. And then for the volume unit, I'll just write that out like this. So for the bounds, dr goes from 0 to infinity, theta goes from 0 to pi, and then phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. And then you see that for the electric field, there are no phi terms, so we can get rid of the phi term first by integrating across phi, so we get a 2 pi. And then there are no theta terms inside as well, so we only have this theta. So we can integrate the sine theta as well from 0 to pi, so that's going to be equal to 2. So we're going to be left with something like this, r squared times e squared dr. So thankfully these cancel out. So for the next step, we're going to have a 2 pi epsilon. And for the integral, I'm going to break this up into two sections. For, so from 0 to r, so inside of the sphere, we're going to have this expression. And then from r to infinity, we're going to have this expression. So notice that I'm just breaking up the integral into two parts. I haven't changed anything inside yet. So now what I need to do is to substitute the corresponding electric field. So from 0 to r, so inside of the sphere, this electric field is going to be this. So I'll substitute that in. So 1 over 4 pi epsilon q over r squared r over big R squared dr. And then from r to infinity, we have this expression. So when r is outside of the sphere, the electric field is going to be equal to this. So this one is easy to remember. So just remember for a uniformly charged sphere, once you're outside, it's going to look the same as a point charge. So let's just get rid of these uh, common uh, constants. So I'm just going to pull these out for convenience sake. So also the q squares, so I'm just going to put the q here. So these are all gone. So now let's focus on the integral. So here we have, we have r to the power of 3. So that's going to turn to r power of 6 because of the square here. So we have a small r square times another r square. That's going to be equal to r to the power of 4 dr. So we have a 1 over r to the power of 4 times r squared, that's going to be equal to 1 over, power, 1 over r squared. So q squared, I'm just going to multiply this twice because of the square. So here, let's just evaluate this integral. So r to the power of 4, that's going to be, once you integrate that, that's going to be r, r to the power of 5 over 5. So substituting big R, you get r to the power of 5 over 5. For this term, 1 over r squared, that's going to be equal to 1 over r, negative 1 over r. 
So for power to infinity. So uh, once again, let's just get rid of some of these constants. That's going to be eight. So let's just copy this mess that we have right now. So for the constants, we have a q square divided by eight pi epsilon. Yep, that's it. So for the r terms inside, we have r to the power of six and r to the power of five. So we're left with one r. 5r and then for here whatever negative is going to be equal to 0 so we're going to have a negative a minus negative 1 over big R so with the two negative signs we get a positive so let's just add these terms up so 6 over 5r so 3 over 4 and then once again we can group these terms up like how I did in the previous video so I'm going to group the 3 and 5 together and then group the 4 pi epsilon together so it's going to look like Coulomb's law and so there we have it we have the exact same answer as what we had in the previous video